was the b-roll from my weekend my boyfriend and I drove about an hour and a half away to a ski resort and we did all sorts of fun things the two-day trip was for both of our birthdays um my birthday's in January and his is in March so we decided to just meet in the middle and celebrate both our birthdays in February so it was so much fun um today is Monday so we both had the day off work today and it's a holiday so um it was nice to kind of play hooky for a couple of days get out of town and take a monday off of work which we don't do very much so um but i am back now and i wanted to update you and officially start this vlog so right now i am reading the writing retreat by andrea bartz julia bartz i get i get the two confused because the author of we were never here is Andrea Bartz and the author of The Writing Retreat is Julia Bartz, right? Are they related? I should probably look that up and figure it out. But basically, we are following Alex and Alex has really bad writer's block. And she, through a friend of a friend, gets the opportunity to go on this writing retreat for a month that is hosted by her favorite horror slash thriller author. And so she gets there and one of her friends, former friends is there, like a friend of me that um, she hasn't talked to in a year. And so she meets all the girls and everything is uh, confronted by her friend of me. And that's about as far as I've, as I've made it to. It's reminding me of that book where all of the authors go to the haunted house, Kill Creek. It's reminding me of Kill Creek with all of the writers there together with um, one very mysterious author. And it's Supposedly the house is haunted and so it's very atmospheric. It's wintry. It was the perfect thing to read while I was um, at a ski resort for the weekend. So I am about 70 pages in. So they've just started like the actual writing. So that's all I have to report and I will be back when I have an update. Okay, so I am home from work. It is Tuesday. I just finished work. I got home and I just filmed my video where I react to people's bookish unpopular opinions. So if that one is already, if it's already out, I'll link it below. But I'm about to go get my nails done, which I really need to because one popped off. Always happens. I go every two weeks and without fail, like 24 hours before I go, one pops off and it's always this one. It's always this one every single time. It's never any other finger. It's always this one. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know what I do. I know I'm a savage with my nails, but I'm not that savage with just my pinky. <laughs> but anyways, last night I made it to about page 200 of the writing retreat and I'm not liking it. Once they got to the retreat and it kind of started going and everything, this woman, this author, Rosa, she's just toxic and she's a narcissist. And I feel like she's playing with people's emotions and people's minds just because she's rich and she can. And I never like that. Rich people behaving badly just cause. I never really enjoy that. And it just seems strange. Like the stakes are not high enough for the things she's asking these girls to do. And I don't know, the thing she's asking, if I had a 20% chance of winning a million dollars, it's not even 20% because there's a lot more things, that, you know, that go into it than just being the last person standing at the end. I would not, that's not enough to convince me to do some of the things that she's asking them to do. 
And then at one point she does something without their knowledge that ends very badly and nobody is really all that concerned about it. Like a couple of them are, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. And I don't like the inner monologue of our main character, Alex. Like I don't need to hear all of the details of your sexual awakening and all of your dirty dreams and things like that. Like I don't need every single detail of all of your wet dreams. Like I'm 200 pages in and she's had three of them in 200 pages. Like, okay, we get it. We get it. You're sexually frustrated. We get it. Um, also, the thing that went down with Alex and Ren for why they're not friends anymore, it just doesn't seem like high enough stakes. I don't know. At, in the beginning when they describe it, it made me think like, oh, did they cover up a murder together or something? And it wasn't. When I found out, I was like, oh, that's it? Okay. So I, I'm just really not enjoying it. And it's, it's slow. It took 150 pages to get to anything even remotely thrilling. And then now I'm just rolling my eyes at all of the characters. There's a lot of unlikable characters. And I feel like it's very tropey. It's very tropey. Um, you know, you have the like very loud, very outgoing feminist. You have the little Southern down home girl that you definitely know has so many secrets and is not at all who she seems. Um, Alex, I wanted Alex to be that like down and out, like, I don't know. I feel like in the death of Mrs. Westaway, the main character's actions were justified because she literally had like $2 to her name. And so she was like, I need money. I need any money. So let me just do whatever I can. Alex is not that down and out. She has an apartment. She has a job. You know, it's not a fantastic job, but it's like a salaried job. And so I don't know, I just feel like she wasn't desperate enough. I wanted her to be more desperate. Honestly, she just feels like a privileged girl from the Midwest who's trying to win a writing contest. You know, and you know what they say, don't meet your heroes. And that's kind of what they're all finding with this author. Um, she's crass and she's manipulative and she's narcissistic and she only cares about herself and they're all stuck in a house with her for a month. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it. At this point, I feel like I have to, but Honestly, the most I would give this book would be a three star. And that's if it had a really good twist and a really good ending. But right now, if I had to rate it, it would be a two, which is crazy because it was like really good the first 70, 80 pages until you get to the retreat and then you, it all kind of falls apart. So those are my thoughts right now. I haven't really, I need to read some reviews because I haven't really seen many other reviews on this and I'm very interested to hear other people's thoughts see if I'm the unpopular opinion or if people agree with me. I don't know. But anyways, we're going to clean the house a little bit for a couple minutes and then go to my nail appointment and then we'll see what we're going to get into tonight. Okay, it is multiple days later and I have finally finished The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. Uh, I think I'm going to give this one two stars. <laughs> I did not get down with a lot of things that happened in this book. Um, where do I start? Uh, the excessive amount of wet dreams that I didn't think were necessary. Um, the twists that weren't really twists. Um, the reveals that didn't make sense. The, um, the really convenient things like, oh, how convenient that they tried to get away on a snowmobile and it was out of gas. Hmm. Super convenient. How convenient that there just happens to be all of this stuff in this old abandoned mansion that she refurbished. Um, how convenient that this person also knew this person who knew this person who knew this person who knew the author and it just I don't like it when characters just know things like show me how they know things or let me see them learning things but I don't like it when characters just know things like I want to experience when they figure it out I want them to just know things um, and then I kept being sure that there was going to be some sort of twist or something at the end was, that was going to like bring this up a star for me. Like I had a theory about the ending. No, there was absolutely nothing surprising about the ending. My ending that I have in my head would have been so much better than this ending. So that's a no-go. And I have wine to make myself feel better. So. so on to the next book. Let me go get it. Let me go get it. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. Okay, <laughs> the 
Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. Um, I was going to read this in February and that didn't happen. So now it's March 1st. So I guess we're reading it in March now. Um, I'm 50 pages in. This was sent to me a couple months ago by my friend Gwen. Um, and I'm really enjoying this so far. It's about a woman who answers an ad to become a housemaid. She does like live in nanny type stuff, live in cleaning, uh, cooking, things like that. And she gets the job. And we know that she has a colored past, but we don't know exactly why. And we know that the mom of the house, Lil Cray, she says one thing and does another. Um, she conveniently forgets to tell her things. Um, and she seems very jealous whenever this girl interacts with the husband in the house. So very interested to see how it's gonna play out. I'm very intrigued. I'm getting good vibes from this. I need another five star. I've only had one this year, so maybe this will be it. So. I worked from home today and I'm all done for the day, but I wanted to show you my fridge pickles. So I made the oh so famous on TikTok fridge pickles and we're gonna try them. They've been sitting in the fridge for three days. So three days, yeah, I made them on Sunday. Not bad. I don't think I've got my concoction right yet. I think they probably could have used a little bit more cane sugar to like offset the acidity and maybe a little bit more garlic as well. They're a little bit spicy which I like. I mean they're good but I don't think I would like like store-bought pickles. I can just sit and eat a whole jar of them like for a meal. But these I definitely could see cutting up and putting in like tuna salad. That would be amazing. Let me know. Comment down below if you've made the fridge pickles. <laughs> and let me know if you have any tips. It's definitely, it was easy. I just don't know what I did wrong. Update on the housemaid. I am about 150 pages in. It moves quick. Um, I feel like I blinked and then I was at page 150. I'm kind of getting tired of all of the comments on Mrs. Winchester's weight. Nina, is that her name? Yeah. They comment on her weight a lot. And I'm like, okay, we get it. Um, also, the main character's kind of kind of dumb. Um, the gardener is Italian. And she learns that the gardener's Italian. And then she sees him and she's like, gracias. And then she was like, oh, wait. That's Spanish, probably not Italian. Oh, well, he'll understand. Like, What? <laughs> girl <laughs> get over yourself um so yeah so that's kind of I don't know and then I don't like how they're making Mrs. Winchester seem like a crazy person because she may or may not have sought impatient help at some point and so therefore she's crazy which therefore makes her dangerous naturally right like I just I don't I don't like when that is used as a twist. I hope it's not used as like a trope. And I guess I will let you know when I have more to report. Okay, so I need to finish out this vlog so that I can get it up for you guys. I have finished The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden and I'm going to give this 5 stars. I basically I just kept thinking about it and it definitely was giving me 5 star feelings and so I was like, don't fight it, Lena. Just just allow it to happen. So I am going to give this book five stars. I liked the ending. I didn't really see it coming all the way. Um, okay, so here's the thing with this book. It reminded me of another domestic thriller, which I'm not going to say it because that would like spoil a lot of things in this book. But um, I was talking to my friend Jackie um, a couple months ago, and I was saying that I couldn't tell you the last time I gave a domestic thriller five stars and I was starting to wonder if I still loved domestic thrillers as much as I used to and this reminded me that I do love them when they're done right. So was this book like the best written thing ever, something earth shattering that no book has ever done before? No. If you wanted to pick this apart and find plenty of flaws with it, you could. 
I decided like I wasn't gonna do that. I wasn't gonna pick it apart. I was just gonna enjoy it for the ride that it was. And I've already spoken kind of of my little things with this book, like the talk about um, Nina's weight and how I don't think that weight should be synonymous with letting yourself go. Um, I talked about like the silliness with saying gracias and hola to an Italian gardener. Um, and um, there was something in the end that was way too convenient. Like if you know, you know, but the whole thing at the end with the detective just way too convenient. And I think something similar could have been done in a way that wasn't quite so convenient. But with those things being said, I really enjoyed this. Um, I feel like it kept me intrigued the whole time. I never felt like it got a slow part. I never felt like it was trying to be something that it wasn't. This was just a good domestic thriller. And so I also, by the way, don't really like this cover um, and like this, what is this? But anyways, the ending made me want to pick up the sequel, which I usually don't want to do that. So yeah, overall, I definitely think if you like domestic thrillers or if you haven't liked domestic thrillers, then maybe this is the one for you. Okay, so in this vlog, <laughs> We had The Writing Retreat, which was two stars, and The Housemaid, which was five stars. So definitely both ends of the spectrum, but I'm glad I had a five star because I only have one five star so far in 2023. So now I have a second one, and I haven't given a thriller a five star since like last summer. This was a win. This was not. <laughs> but thank you for coming along with me reading some hyped thrillers. Um, I will continue to pick up hyped thrillers because I am a glutton for punishment. So I will probably continue to give into the hype for a lot of thrillers that are out there, but this one definitely lives up to the hype that it gets, honestly. It just really does. This one, no, don't, don't bother. Don't waste your time. Don't bother. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these or if I've convinced you to pick this one up or if I've convinced you to not pick this one up. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.